So at 3, let it begin to 3.35, meeting of the Northampton Council on Aging, Thursday, May 12th, call to order. We have a quorum. I don't see anyone, but we don't know. So let's move into um, reviewing approval of the minutes from our last April 28th meeting. Second. Hi. Hi, Bruce. Welcome. So you have a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting and a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Any opposition? <laughs> um, I put the placeholder to update the selection process simply in the event we might have any news because we can't really talk about something that's not on the agenda, but we don't have any news. Um, there have been, as of the uh, <coughs> yesterday, there were no additional applicants. The application deadline has been extended to next Friday. Um, I don't know, I haven't had the discussion about what's going to happen. How many candidates are there now? Six. And the, I think I said at the last meeting it was um, Alan Wolf, who's the Mayor's Chief of Staff, has looked at them all and said there's at least one strong person, one person that he felt was certainly should be interviewed, and the other he felt didn't have the experience. So it's not, a, it's not a candidate pool of great numbers. And it has been promoted, certainly the article that came from our last meeting from that nice cassette reporter <laughs> served as another ad. Um, but that's where we are. So if there's anything that I'm aware of that is of significance, I'll let you know. No, I won't move for the meeting, but that's what you know. Unfortunately, it's not much. And you said, that, is it, do they have a priority, whether it's experience or uh, education? What do you know? Oh, it's experience. It's they're really people, looking for the experience. People who have senior center experience, who have management experience, you know, thinking about someone coming into this organization needs to have all of that. This is not this is not a job where you teach someone what a senior center is all about. So, so it's yeah, it's 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 a unique profile. That there are people out there. Any any other old business? New business, I know Jim, you had a question about the whole transportation services overview. So Laura's ask Laura, should you just provide us with an overview about what's available? Who we you know, what not only what we do but what everyone else does and how we coordinate it. So we um, have a program where people can call in. We ask for 48 hours notice. Um, if someone has an emergency, we will do our best to get them transportation. Um, we have PVTA, which we can use for anything within the city um, for a dollar each way between 7.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock arrival, and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, after that time, the price goes up, but they still will get transportation. We use Cosmic Cab for medical transportation um, within the city limits. So this mm -hmm. has limited us as far as West Hatfield. PBTA doesn't go to West Hatfield, and the cost was higher than um, was desired to, for us to use the taxi service to get into West Hatfield. Um, Cindy and I were talking earlier, maybe we can find a way to um, maybe raise the cost for the people using the service, <coughs> using the taxi, and us pay that difference. Um, so it's something I'm going to be checking in with. I'll talk to Charlene um, up at the mayor's office and see if maybe we can just that way subsidize a little, a little less and have the patron pay a little bit extra. Um, it's going to be a lot cheaper than them paying the cost for the whole taxi service. How, how much use do we get that, going that direction? Um, I, I think I sent it to you. Was it? Um, there was, I think, eight patrons that used it when we had the dollar transportation, and I think it was a total of maybe thirty-nine rides, thirty-six rides. So that's a fair. It's, it's enough. enough. Yeah, yeah. Colitic and Orthopedic. Yeah, it's up there. right over the border. Yeah. yeah. Can't we drop them off and, <laughs> <laughs> and have someone who's recovered from orthopedic surgery walk over? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There you go. There's <laughs> I don't remember. Um, it was significant to go 
from what it is in the city. The city rides range between 12 and 14 each way. Uh -huh. And I want to say it was 18 to 25, possibly, to go into West Hatfield. Um, I don't remember. It was a year ago. And we, we charge were... four, correct? We charge four. So we're already subsidizing a good 10 to 12 per ride. Right. And we, we are, um, what is it, 200, 250% of the poverty level we're trying to um, have people apply for financial aid, um, and that way we can try to <coughs> use the grant that we were able to get through Highland Valley to subsidize as many rides as we can for people. And then they ride for free. Hmm. So. so the notion was to look at, if it's a higher rate, we subsidize less, so someone would pay more than four bucks to go to West Hatfield. We would subsidize it, but not at the same rate, because it, or see how much we could subsidize, so that's what, so. Laura talked about getting with the person who's the city's financial officer just to review the finances and do some projections. And so the reason we that these vehicles can't meet the city limits is because it's city money. It's out of our transportation budget. So we provide. So the right. I mean, so who makes the rule? So the the cap rule is the cap because it's they they're, they cross the city line. The fare goes up. So a decision was made to limit the cab service to within the city to keep the cost down. Uh -huh. So that's what Laura said, we're going to explore because we know that there's this one location in West Hatfield that because it's the orthopedic wing of the hospital where there's sufficient interest in going. So right, there's we, actually two places because there's fine sports and then there's oh. fine sports <laughs> in our Hampton still. Right. Oh, it is? It right. Is. Oh, well, yes. yeah, so it's, so it's the line. Uh -huh. So, so it's, the, it's the cab company's uh -huh. fare structure is obviously based on town lines. So that's right. what, it's a financial decision. Right, well, yeah, I mean, right. I, I know, but I just, like, somebody makes decisions, so I didn't know, like, I, you know, like, some, I didn't, I didn't know who made the decision. The decision was, Marie made the decision. So the uh, uh, we visit the, we visit so PBTA is only within Northampton. PBTA will go to any city that they service, but they don't service Hatfield. Okay. So if someone needs to ride to Amherst, uh -huh. Ohio, West Springfield, we, yeah, we have them call PBTA uh -huh. themselves to set up the ride, and it's three to five dollars right. each way. And so, and so it's Cosmic Cab, and not because of the. It's not because of where the funding source is. It's no. because of Cosmic. No, it's about the it's about the amount of the money, not who's funding it. So the question again mm -hmm. is to look, do some projections with the city's financial officer based on what's a reasonable amount and how much we can afford. And so the reason that we have Cosmic Cap again is because because <clears throat> we had it. I thought what happened was that we had it and then the grant ran out and then we needed to resubmit the grant. But since Marie was gone, I just wanted you know. So that that we we now have that grant reinstated? It's a different grant. <coughs> um, the one that we were using for the dollar rides for the taxi service was a dollar each way. Mm -hmm. We were able to subsidize. That was through MAPC. That ran out, and the new grant was through Highland Valley, and I, you know, I reached out today to see if I could get a copy because I don't have the contract. Um, but I know it was a lesser amount. It wasn't that big um, a grant. Uh -huh. um, so in order to use it, we had to drop, we had to raise the prices for the taxi service mm -hmm. and drop Hatfield. Were those matching grants or were they full grants? I don't know. It's a full, how did you value it because of full grant? No it's full grant. It's not matched. Yeah. So, so we don't have, I, and of course the person that does the grants is off today. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so it's, it's a financial out. issue, which is why we're going to look into it. And if it's financially feasible, then we'll just start going to West Hatfield. There's no, there's no, that's what, it, it's about money. Yeah. So it's not a huge, but it's one thing when I asked Laura, you know, what's the one, is there one place where we're not able to provide service that we wish we could, and that's what she mentioned, so that's why we're going to do some investigation. So PBTA, so we're not, are we turning people away who say they want to ride? No. No. So, and it's only to West Hatfield. Right, well, so, so West Hatfield, um, West Hatfield. Everything else is covered. Yes. Right, so when we don't have a backup of people who we can't provide rides for. Right. And if it's a, it's a timing issue, is, is that generally when you would refer to Northampton neighbors if someone wants to go and you can't get a slot at 2 p.m.? No, it's pretty much we call it, we send people for West Hatfield. Okay. With the rest of them, we can, we really can gotcha. do them. Okay. 
So West, West Hatfield is the Northampton neighbor stock yet. Right oh, there's one, one other thing I should. Um, if someone is going to a medical appointment, um, a procedure at Cooley Dick, they won't let someone go back out right, I know. to a taxi or the bus. Gotcha. So and that would be someone we right. would refer to them as well. Right. right. Mm. But they just, I mean, and, and Northampton neighbors has drivers, but <clears throat> we, you know, they stop services for a long time and mm -hmm. they're ramping up. And so mm -hmm. I know just from having one of the people who tries to match people that there isn't always a volunteer. So um, right. people end up, it just stresses people out. But it's, a, but it's a cross referral. So I would think the other way that if you weren't able to match someone out, unless they've come here first, you could refer them back here. If you're, if you're taking Northampton neighbor's call, that is something that could be someone could be taken by the cab or PBTA. Prefer them back here if they haven't already been here. I do. Okay. So <clears> although we weren't going to have to when I what, last right. meeting, when okay. I, so I didn't know what was going to happen with that. And so, um, and there were people who were, it felt like kind of, you know, like okay. swinging in the wind. <laughs> yeah, and that is and, a hard one. And stressing, you know, like that's the thing is that people stress out about it because you know here they. They call and they have an appointment, but they can't get anybody to say, yup, I'll do it. You know, like and when they ask, and they have to wait to find out. And, uh, you know, it's all, I mean, it's all good, but it's just, you know, it feels like, it just, I, you know, it, I read, like when I joined the board, that I was supposed to advocate for people, mm -hmm. you know. So, so, so it sounds like you've got, <laughs> you've got at least a plan to figure out whether West Hatfield can be on the table. Yeah, just it was a, the, the next advocates for Cooley Dickinson to move their stuff back in. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, they, that. since they service more than Northampton, yeah. it's right there by 91. I'm sure it's an obvious reason why it's located yes. where it is. Yeah, so well, you did see where um, Springfield Mercy Hospital moved their rehab on the King Street now. So maybe yeah. people should just switch to that. I'm sorry. Go to, go to another hospital. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where I went. South Korea. And the brand new psychiatric wing is being built just uh, behind the, at the mall in New York, where the uh, other it was a facility there before. Oh, well, I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm um, offering five. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be. It's huge. Of course, Bay State stopped. Are there yeah. other questions about transportation? Yeah, so I wonder, Laura, if it's worth. Anybody having a conversation with Cosmic Cab specifically to focus on people who need to go to that particular place? We have. Yeah, that's and we they have. won't change? They will. They would do the ride, but it was our end with a cost. Yeah. But, but I mean, Cosmic's been wonderful. They will do it. It's Cosmic's, as I understand from what Cindy's saying, it's Cosmic's rule that if we cross this line, it goes up. It's just their rates. It's their, their rates. Well, well what I'm asking is, is there any way to negotiate that rate for this one place? We tried. Yeah. And I think we also, and I, I don't say this as neutral as I can, not everyone who needs a ride is not able to afford the ride. So I think we want to we want to look at what's possible, but also acknowledge that we've got the resources to deeply subsidize someone for whom any cost is a burden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for people who, for whom it's just finding a ride and they can afford it, I think that's what will end, probably end up in figuring out how many, how many rides or what subsidy can we do with Cosmic and then how many deep subsidies are we going to be able to afford because the ride will go up for sure than more than it is now. Now what about Cooley Dickinson? How come has anybody approached them about subsidizing? And they obviously put this building in Hatfield because it was cheaper to probably have it in Hatfield. And now our people are suffering because it's over the Hatfield line under the, the Cooley Dickinson umbrella. Yeah. I, would, I would assume Cooley Dickinson service area is far greater than Northampton. So that's why I'm assuming it's there because of access to 91. It's sort of um, between yeah. Holy and yeah. Greenfield. It's the only hospital, so I don't think it's an issue with city stuff. And I, the other thing is that I've gone there for rehab myself, and you have to go two or two times or once a week. Yeah. So that also adds mm -hmm. to the burden of how many times that person has to be there. It's not just once a month and an occasional appointment yeah. if you're going upstairs. For right, let's set you up for 12 appointments right off of that. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's also, there is cool to do physical therapy, depending on down on Apple Drive, so it's not the only place where physical yeah. therapy is available. We take a lot there. 
Right. So it's. But they're booking very far out. Sure. I, mean, I think that's that's pandemic influence. Yes. <laughs> on top of everything else we're doing. Is there any plan to get the, um, the drivers back on board? I was a driver before for people's appointments. Is that, I mean, I guess we have to wait for the new director to I figure so. out if they're going to do something like that, a volunteer driver program. Which coming from working at the FRTA, I had a MedRight program in there, and people paid a certain, I think we did um, 40 cents per mile, and we paid our drivers 55 cents a mile to do it. I don't know. I'd love to see a program like that, but I'm assuming that would be nice if our neighbors could be part of that. I don't know if we could do a joint. Well, I think it, it sounds like it's worth, depending on hopefully that the short-term solution for West Hatfield can be worked out, even if it's only short-term. But when there's a new director, a new assistant director, when we're more fully staffed, to really stepping back and everyone being able to look at comprehensively the transportation system, look at, you know, what's the viability of long term with Northampton neighbors to look at mm -hmm. collective everyone's looking at it and you know what's needed is it more individual drivers is it I have to try and get the van one of the vans back I mean that I know from what Marie said before that was the least cost efficient way to provide transportation and certainly once COVID hit it became even yeah so it, it's I think there's a lot of factors in, in play Unless there's something that could be done as a co-op between other senior centers, a few of the other ones put together, whether it be Stampton, you know, Williamsburg, Hadley, here, could come up with a plan together to could service the whole group. Why well, don't Williamsburg use the FRTA bus? So they yeah, okay. most most of most of the med, I'm venture guess that most of the med appointments for someone in Stampton either they're coming to Northampton or they're probably going to Holyoke. It's probably not a lot of the other way yeah. but I think I think everything is, has to be on the table yeah. to look at you know moving forward what's the best way to keep providing some a transportation system that needs current needs I don't know if I misunderstood Eugene or not but does Northampton neighbors not go out of Northampton for trans transportation oh they, they'll go they, they don't have any like oh. I mean line city line thing they don't um I mean people call and they want transportation to Springfield sometimes oh. or you know even sometimes to Amherst and those can be sometimes harder to find volunteers for it obviously um, and I'm sure these days with the cost of gas that must make it even mm -hmm. more challenging yeah yeah. But, uh, yeah so it's just you know it's just a it's just that it feels like there's just like there's need and, and it's a I'm sure will be a collaborative approach but um, well, it sounds like it's pretty collaborative right now, so it's just a question of so yeah. It was tap field yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Any other questions related to transportation? Um, so the grants that you mentioned, uh, do they what kind of closing time do they have on them? Do you know? Like since we you don't have a director. I the think it's July first maybe uh -huh. for that one. And who writes oh, we're, we're, Michelle's going to work on that. Oh, and we've offered to help her with it. Okay. So yeah. It's likely the fiscal year. Most state grants, most, not all, run by the fiscal year, which started July 1st. Yeah, I figured that. And it was just because there was no director. You know, and, no and I know that MAPCA grant, that was wonderful. Because we were a dollar eye, they could do, use mm -hmm. the cap for anything. Mm -hmm. And that was great. Because PDTA, it's, as Bruce can tell you, it's a little bit of a weight with it, isn't it? Um, so the, the cap's a lot quicker. Yeah. And less expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, less expensive to operate. Right. Not that less is, although, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, but given gas prices, they might be thinking about rate hikes. They're up to the highest part of their quote, right? Now. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Laura. Appreciate, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, other business, other topics that... And Gina, you had another question. Someone had a question about whether former COA members could... Someone had a question about whether former COA members could come back as a new COA member. I don't like this question. I don't have an answer yet, but I haven't, it has not been forgotten.
other business, other topics. Um, I'll bring it up and give you the brief summary that Michael and I got from Michelle when we were walking in. Because that reader's note obviously saw two letters in the paper yesterday around from our friends in the bridge group. And they're, I guess they're coming back in tomorrow and it's Michelle's plan to meet with them and then to try and set up individual conversations with people in the group, particularly those who are vocal with their concerns. A greater concern has been they have not been at all following, following the code of conduct here. They have been rude, bullying to, the term. rude to staff, bullying to staff. Um, so she's going to try and see what she can do to defuse the situation and get come to a reasonable solution. But um, based on, you know, there's certain guidance for holding things here in this building, hours, space availability, etc. So. You know, I could understand, you know, since the building closes at four, having being out at four right. should not have been an issue. Correct. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> on time. Right. And building and you know, happy to have a group meet here if you can make it work within the guidance that comes with the building. So the, so the issues were that they, they were not consensus? They they were, it sounded like there was some concern about having to stop playing before four so that they could physically be out of the building at four versus stop playing at four. Mm -hmm. And wanting, if I'm remembering, wanting access to the room Earlier, to start. earlier than the appointed time. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> and then we have what, when we're back up and running, what will be in that space right before that? I don't know. We have lunch if we do. Yeah, uh, you know, if we do a Friday lunch. Yeah. So I think it's. I mean, I don't have the details, and it's 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 ours to be aware of, and mm -hmm. the staffs to solve. Um, but it sounds like Michelle's approach is to try and diffuse the. Stuff and she point she made and Laura she confirmed that it's not everyone in the group. It's just a few people who, like in most situations, tend to be the most vocal people. And the goal was to try and talk with them and try and get some, diffuse the situation. Hopefully, make it make it better and limit the number of letters to the editor. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been more than a year. Easy. We okay. have had a lot of people come in through the door, though, since the letters came out, thanking us for what we're doing. So. Oh, that's oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. very nice. Yeah. It's not a new issue. No. No. They're just bringing up the same stuff that they were yes. bringing up be before the pandemic. Okay. Thanks. It didn't sound like it was that different no, to me either. It doesn't sound different. No, it's no. not. Thanks. Yeah. Huh. So, unfortunately, yeah. it would be nice if we didn't have to have some of the old arguments going on, but... It's not a right. Exactly. I mean, that, that is, my way of saying is that, 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 that the center is available for a variety of things, and there's guidance for using it. And you know, if you your group's activity can meet with the guidance, that's great. It's not a bar room that you can close a place down. They have to literally pull you out at the end of the night or something. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that'll never happen here. <laughs> no, but I mean, we'll never see that. We're fortunate to provide it. Yeah, space, exactly. It seems like it's busier. You see, the, the parking lot seemed more full. We are think. getting new people coming in. Yeah. That's great. And when I was in the coffee shop, I saw interviews for maybe four people during the time I was there for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. new people. people coming that's in great. Being, yeah. yeah, it's great to hear. And as we can ramp up more, it's hard with so few staff members, but as right. we get more and more programs, it seems to be. People are excited about it. People love the lunches. That's a big draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, give up the good work, Kevin. Don't go anywhere. Yet. Even yeah. today, when Kevin wasn't working, he had prepared everything ahead of time oh, good. so that we were able to do absolutely everything just as if he was there. It was just beautiful. So it's so you work, you work in the kitchen, you work in the, the dining room, yes, the yep. and the coffee shop, or and, just the And the coffee shop. Foods are a thing here, right? We just give up the coffee. 
He gets coffee, okay. And chocolate croissants. There's <laughs> <laughs> two reasons. Two reasons. Two reasons. Add it, add it. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Kevin and I go way back. <laughs> yeah, he's such a nice guy. Yeah. And we're lucky that he's, to have found him and lucky that he was still available when, after everything opened up again, as he said. But he said this is his dream job. So. Really? Oh, that's nice. That's nice to meet him. Wow. Now, I have a question going back. Did we find out anything more about the uh, dementia-friendly program? You said there was going to be some information uh, I, coming, yeah, what available. I, what I said, and I neglected to send, I said that I would send the draft age and dementia-friendly plan to everybody, and I forgot to do that. So thank you for reminding me. Okay. I will commit to doing that when I get home. Um, the steering committee is meeting sometime in the next week or so to look at all the priorities and try and come up, try to look at it with what can be accomplished in the next 12 months. Yeah. And I um, put a request in to, for a meeting with the mayor and her chief of staff to review a number of things, including that with her, and just get her concurrence that we're on the right track because it's. It is a city sponsorship, so it's the mayor, yes. the previous mayor, who signed the request. So we just need to make sure that the mayor's on board with it. On board and okay with. It's one of the other things I know I mentioned at the last meeting that the funding source is community compact money, state money, for a three-year period to really assess the city's own age friendliness and looking at practices and procedures, language. And that includes us here. Yeah. And I think that's, to me, that's a real priority to get that going in parallel rather than looking at someone, you know, a business or something. Are you age friendly if we're not convinced that we ourselves as a, as a city? And she really needs to be behind that one. Yeah. So that's where it is. And then, and Kathy Service, some of you know, who's here when we're coming in is part of the steering committee and she is leading the dementia friendly aspect. So there are several working groups and dementia friendly is sort of embedded in each of the working groups to ensure dementia friendliness aspect of everything. Does that help? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Other anything else? Other business? Anything that we take it? I just hope everybody takes a moment to look at the art when you leave. And this Friday will be, I think it's maybe the fourth um, reception we're having in conjunction with Art Side Out. If anybody feels like you know, they could either tell their friends or come by, that, that would be lovely. Hopefully the warm weather will bring out more people, mm -hmm. period. So tomorrow's not Art Side Out? Yeah. Um, any topics that you'd like to see in the agenda for our next meeting? In June, I can't believe we're in June already. Do you have anything, Bruce? Do you want to hear from a bystander? We're happy to hear, yes, we're happy to hear from you. Okay. I've been a member of this senior center back when Patty Shaughnessy, uh -huh. and I donated to the van. Thank you for that. Okay. I would like to see that van going uh, again. Okay. And I understand gas prices have skyrocketed, and I propose two or three dollars a trip to offset the operation of the van. Well, we'll certainly look into it. I know there were two vans. One is no longer operable. And I don't remember the status of the other one. It needs work. It needs work, yeah. So I think that's that's certainly it's a factor as well as obviously funding. So I think that's I think that's part of looking at a a whole 
sort of comprehensive approach to, to transportation. Okay. So stay tuned. That, yeah, thank I, you. I will stay tuned. <laughs> And I wanted to see if there's a possibility of increasing the salary of the staff. That's Laura, here. how much did you pay him to say <laughs> that? <laughs> and because they have a, a done an awesome job. So, um, as you may know, no one around this table has any authority in, in what salaries anyone gets. We are certainly able to pick up on Jean's earlier advocate for salaries, and um, which we certainly can't do. There's a whole city pay structure, and there are, pro are more, far more factors that go into determining a salary position than I can even think about. The mayor is increasing, uh, advocating to increase the Board of Health. To, to, to expand the Board of Health into a new yeah. department, yes, for money, read, read in the paper. Okay. We can certainly convey that sentiment. I would be personally very happy to do that. <laughs> but you won't shoot the messenger if nothing happens, okay? Shoot me. <laughs> no. As I was coming in, one of the gentlemen suggested it would be really kind of neat if there was a cold beverage machine, Coke machine. I wonder if that's something that could be looked into, if it's feasible. I know Kevin has, when the bistros, I mean when the coffee shop's open, and he does have water out there available to people. Yeah. I don't know about having... It would have to be some kind of a self-serve machine. Yeah, I think we're talking about Coke. Yeah, Coke machine. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I can pass well, that along, but I yeah, don't but know. Yeah, but it's something to explore, and, and yeah. you know, whatever the arrangements are, they, how much you have to pay if you don't get well, it. A, a, a lot of times they look at the put traffic through and then decide on the, the, the size of the machine. Yeah. But uh, they make their profit off of. Paying two dollars and fifty cents for a, uh, a dollar soda, so you know it, it's it's very easy to, depending on what they put in the machine mm -hmm. and whether it's uh, healthy stuff or not healthy, but everybody likes stuff. Uh, so. And that's one thing Kevin has strived to do here was to keep healthy food and drinks. You know that raises something interesting. Mm -hmm. Former student of mine who lives here, who's David Starr. You've seen his name. David went into business and made a substantial sort of amount with food healthy vending machine things. And I think he may still be connected to it. We might, and David's also a, a generous and contributing person. I wonder if we could talk to him. And Why don't you it. talk to him? Yeah. yeah. You know him. I'll call him. We'll find out what the deal is. We also have the issue of the building, you're not supposed to be eating and drinking in this building. So that needs to be re-looked at. Because thought, people leaving soda cans or drinking or tipping over soda on our new rug and floor and stuff like that. I thought we'll have I to thought we talked about the ability, one of the reasons having those tables that people could bring the trains. Yes, that's what I thought. I've done a lot of this. Yeah. Right, but only on the non-carpeted. Right, I mean, right. that's what the corners, the, the perimeter, yes. yeah. Yeah. around the edges. Yes, yeah. around the edges. Yeah. So maybe if, if, if there's a room, you know, a vending machine that's in the around the edges, yeah. or, <laughs> or in, the, in the coffee shop, if there was room or someplace, just to. But it's and it's worth exploring. I mean, sure. anything's worth exploring, sure. but it's feasible. And it would be nice to think that at some point we'll have the coffee shop open again at yeah. three day for the club. Yeah. Well, it's, it's something like that just seems if it's feasible, worth a try yeah. to see if, it's, if well, there's well, interest, and if it's not, you yeah. take it out. Yeah. I got one other sure. query. Michael reminded me of that just a few minutes before the meeting. Does, uh, however, the staff have a CPR course and AED, and the people in the Bistro have abdominal thrust training. 
Should I answer that? Please do. <laughs> just before we closed, during COVID, we had just gone through all the training, the whole staff. Um, we are in the process of trying to find a new course so that we can all once again be trained. We do have an AED out in the lobby as you come into the building. We do have that. Some of us have been trained to use it. Um, when Michael went down today, I called 911 immediately. I know our service here in the city, I know they would have been here in minutes. Um, but yes, we are looking into more training. And I know Kevin has gone through the training. I'm oh, sure. And, uh, okay, was it? Yeah, he went through it with us. I yeah. think the service should go through the training. Well, I've, I'm first aid and CPR certified anyway, okay. from previous state certification courses. So if we're going to have something go on, we want to do it when you're here. Yes, I've been referred to as Nurse Bob many times. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Nurse, it's good to know that. <laughs> Since I was a health and safety person for the industries, I was the person that patched up a lot of people and Makes took care sense. of a lot sure. of people while they were waiting That's for ambulance or hospitals. And I spent 35 years in Boy Scouts patching up people <laughs> on camping trips. <laughs> So there's your next in time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me for a <laughs> Hey, Bruce, anything else? Yes. Um, I know there's an AED out here uh -huh. in the lobby. I think additional AED needs to be outside the fitness center because that's where a heart attack or potential injury takes place. That sounds like something that would be... Uh, Maybe centrally located in the hall here, which would split the difference between... Or something worth talking to our friends yeah. at the Board of Health. Yep. And just, you know... I think it's the fire department, actually, because that's fire? who replaces our batteries. Yeah. 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 Or get, so getting someone to make an assessment of what's... Is it, the, is it the right location? Yeah. Should there be another one given the activity? I can, I can email okay. one. Okay, and it, the current AED needs to be checked by the fire department. They, they do. Yeah. They do on a it, monthly basis. It just, it okay. just was. Yeah, so they, 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 they know where, it sounds like they yeah. know where they are, so it's up yeah. on their because schedule. Because an AED no longer is viable if the batteries are dead. Yep. No, we just replaced them. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. And, Thank you. And often there's a checklist inside the AED box which says when it was checked last. Mm -hmm. So like when your car goes in front of It's very, very, very similar to. And it beeps. Thank you. It beeps when the batteries get Yes, it makes a lot of noise, yes. So there's no, there's no getting around him. No. Okay. So our next meeting is June 9th here. And if there's anything that comes to mind that you want to see on the agenda for then just shoot me an email. That if nothing comes out not today. But. Did we get, were we able to get the uh, information about joining the committee in the No, I missed the deadline. Okay. So it's gonna go in the next one. Okay. I, I talked to um, or emailed back and forth with Nancy about whether to put it in the um, constant contact you said it's really more appropriate for the con chronicle. Yeah, so for the chronicle. Right. Away for the next one, which I think is fine. There's enough. There's no urgency. No. Um, and that's another thing that I want to say on that list of things for the mayor is just we have some interest in the perspective of where she is. Mm -hmm. And she has names and she's the person who does the appointment. Yes. Yeah, there might be applicants for other departments that would be interested. Right, and there may, be, there may be some applications there that none of us are aware of that she right. may be able to bring us up to date. Are they dying a slow death? <laughs> yeah. Sitting in a fire. I don't know. She seems pretty efficient. I can't imagine that she'd let things yeah. just sort of sit there idly. But yeah. So we're officially adjourned. Okay. We have a motion. Yes, a motion. I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. Everybody. Yeah. 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 We're good. Thank you.